In the previous two episodes, we've looked at how correlation heat maps can be used to better inform your portfolio diversification strategy. Firstly, for assets and asset classes, and then last time for diversification across timeframes. This time, we produce a correlation heat map for different classification of trading strategies. So looking at the correlation between a trend-based strategy with a mean reverting strategy, or a mean reverting strategy with a breakout strategy. And the real benefit of this type of diversification is that it can work when other types don't. All will be explained. Stay tuned. As I said in the introduction, the real benefit of trading strategy diversification is that it can work when other types of diversification don't. So during times of high correlation in the markets, for example, where the price action of individual assets can become very correlated. This therefore means asset diversification loses its ability to reduce portfolio risk. And so this is where strategy diversification gives us that additional dimension to help us out. But of course, it's also a useful component at any time. In this study, I've taken a mean reversion strategy, a breakout strategy, and two different trend-based strategies, and constructed a correlation heat map between them. Let's take a look. We have a trend-based system here on the left, followed by an alternative trend-based system. So this is using different indicators, different rules, but is still based on that trend-following premise. Then we have a mean reversion strategy, and over here on the right, a breakout strategy. And the data below these is for the equity curves of each of those strategies. Now you can see here on the left, these are the four equity curves. So the blue line is the first trending strategy. The yellow line is the second trending strategy. Orange is mean reversion and gray is breakout. But as we've seen before, when we look at equity curves, it's impossible to get an accurate idea of whether they're correlated or not just by looking at the chart. We have to perform a calculation in order to get that quantitative measure of the correlation between them. And in the same way as we've seen before, the correct way of doing that isn't to compare the equity curves themselves, it's to calculate the difference between subsequent values on that equity curve, and it's those that we compare across the entire time period. And by doing it this way, it means we have a direct comparison to see if the two equity curves are moving in the same direction, or if one's going up while the other's going down, or vice versa. And this should be the technique you always use when calculating correlation for this type of movement. And from that information, we can now plot a scatter chart like the one you see here. And so in this example, along the x-axis here, we have the equity moves that we just saw for the first trend-based system. And on the y-axis, we have the moves for the second trend-based system. And so this means that anything in the top right-hand quadrant represents times when both of those systems were increasing the equity during that period of time. Bottom left, and the equity was decreasing for both systems. But then anything in the top left or the bottom right means they were moving in opposite directions. And from this, we can plot a trend line and calculate the R squared value. And so here, this value of 0.5024 is what you can see here in the R squared heat map. So this is the R squared value between trend system one and trend system two. However, we need to be careful. Although R squared, or the coefficient of determination, is the best way of measuring the correlation for things like assets and asset classes, it isn't when it comes to comparing things like trading strategies. 
You see, when it comes to the equity curves for trading strategies, it's actually beneficial if we have a negative correlation. Because with negative correlations, this means that they're moving in opposite directions more often than they're not. And so because R squared gets rid of that direction by squaring the value, we lose that valuable information. And that's why on the left here, we have the correlation coefficient or R. And this of course retains that direction. So here, a negative value represents a negative correlation and a positive value represents a positive correlation. So the sign there is retained, whereas here, of course, it isn't. So let's look at some examples of this below. So this is the scatter chart for one of the trend systems against the mean reversion system. And here, because the slope of the red line is going down as you go to the right, this tells us that this is a negative correlation. And although small, what this means is that there are more points in the bottom right quadrant and the top left quadrant than in the other two, which shows us that more often than not, these equity curves are moving in an opposite direction. And that, of course, is exactly what we want as part of our diversification strategy, because it means that drawdowns will be smoothed out more efficiently. And so although this has a R squared value of 0 0.001, the R value is negative 0 0.03. And the more negative the values here, the better. So in terms of the color coding here, one represents a perfect positive correlation, which would mean that both equity curves were moving in the same direction all of the time. And so this would offer zero value in terms of diversification. And then the negative values are appearing in green. And then everything in between, we have either orange or yellow. And so looking at the correlation specifically with the mean reversion system, we can see that the best negative correlations coming from trend system one, then trend system two, and then finally, this is the correlation with the breakout system, which although it is positive, it's still very close to zero, and so would still offer benefits in terms of diversification. But look at this value here. This is the correlation between the two trend-based systems, and it's 0 0.708. And so although these two strategies are using different indicators and different settings, the fact that they're both still based on a trend following premise means that the correlation is really quite high. And so the value of trading both of these systems in the same portfolio is drastically reduced. So I'm hoping that that's illustrated the point that it's not good enough to just trade different trading strategies. They have to be based on a different premise to offer you that real value in terms of diversifying your portfolio. And so for now, that concludes our mini-series on diversification. I will at some point in the future return to the subject, specifically to look at advanced ways of balancing your portfolio to reduce those risk levels to the maximum extent. However, next time, we've got something different. Now, if that episode's already available, then click top right now. Otherwise, please subscribe and you'll be notified when videos like this are released. So thanks for your time, trade safe.